The Absolute S9 is a premium mobile controller that enables you to turn your mobile phone, pad or any similar device into a full handheld console, competing with the likes of the Backbone and Razer Kishi at a budget price. But can the Absolute S9 successfully turn your mobile phone into a handheld console that can compete with retro gaming handhelds or is it just a gimmick? I've been using the Absolute S9 with my mobile phone exclusively as my number one console for the past week to answer these questions. And this is what happened. I'm no stranger to using my phone with a controller for gaming. Traditionally I've used an Xbox One controller with a grip, but have always been curious about a dedicated mobile controller and how one will perform. To date I've not taken a chance on one, they always seem to cost a bit more than I wanted to pay, plus there are so many retro handhelds to choose from, I've never found the need. However, when Absolute reached out to me to see if I wanted to check out the S9, a premium controller at a budget price, I jumped at the chance to finally see what a dedicated mobile controller feels like and how it operates. First impressions of the Absolute S9 were great. The controller came in a sleek black box that indicated a high level of quality and attention to detail. The S9 came with customizable options in the form of two tall analog sticks, two 3D style D-pad replacements and removable magnetic faceplates. The customization options are great to have and it's really easy to swap them about. Personally, I just stuck with the basic layout and style. Putting my mobile phone into the Absolute S9 and starting to use the controller was as simple as sliding my phone into the USB Type-C connector and the controller automatically started working. I didn't even need to take my phone out of its case. There is an app that comes with the S9 and that acts as a great gaming hub but it's not needed for just plug and play. The first thing I noticed was how instantly my phone just felt like a dedicated handheld. The snug hold of the S9 and the full game controller style shape really work well to create an immersive feeling. To get the most out of the S9, I decided to install the app before getting deep into gaming. The app genuinely feels like a useful tool as opposed to an annoying accompaniment that sometimes comes with similar devices. It enables you to pull in any games on your device to be easily accessible from within the app, making for a great place to manage all your gaming. It also works a bit like a storefront, giving you recommendations and access to games from the Xbox Cloud Library, etc. The first thing I wanted to do was to check out some PS2 emulation. I often get comments on the channel telling me to not bother with these underpowered handhelds and to just use my phone instead. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to put that idea to the test. After installing EtherSX2, I decided to test one of the games that has given me the most difficulty with emulating, Toka Race Driver. I was really pleased to see that Toka ran smoothly right from the outset, even being able to move up to 1.5 resolution. Maybe mobile phone emulation is the way to go. My phone is a Xiaomi Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus, a modern phone but not one particularly focused on gaming. It comes with a MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Ultra, so I was really impressed to see this kind of performance. I also jumped into Midnight Club and Tokyo Extreme Racer. Again, both games ran brilliantly on the phone, and the Absolute S9 really made for a fully immersive and comfortable gaming experience. Using my phone mostly as a game console for the rest of the evening, I actually forgot to put it on charge, which meant the next morning I woke up with only 50% charge. I guess subconsciously I stopped thinking about it as my phone, so didn't go through my normal bedtime routine of putting it on charge. The next day I carried on with Tokyo Extreme Racer, as I was really enjoying it. However, as I'd forgotten to charge my phone the night before, it ran out in the middle of the morning. You can charge your phone through the Absolute S9, it has a USB Type-C port and the controller acts as a pass-through to the phone, however I decided to take my phone out and charge it normally as it took up less space on my desk that way. But I think the act of dismounting my phone subconsciously made me stop thinking of it as a handheld console, because I didn't pick it up for gaming for the rest of the day. The following day I decided to make sure to make the most and focus on using my phone with the S9. I ensured it was fully charged at the beginning of the day and started some pretty heavy gaming in the morning. Once again Tokyo Extreme Racer was great fun, but I decided to switch things up a bit with Fortnite. Fortnite runs really well with the Absolute S9 and is probably the best handheld gaming experience I've had with Fortnite. The full console controller feeling of the S9 really helps with accuracy and quick movements. Something like the Retro Pocket 4 Pro makes for a really fun experience with Fortnite, but it's definitely harder to put in a good performance, due to the handheld style controls and ergonomics. The Absolute S9 on the other hand brings the best of both worlds. It provides the portability of a handheld console with the ergonomics of a proper console controller, making for a really comfortable and immersive experience that never makes you feel like you're missing out or at a disadvantage. One thing I did start to notice though after a long play session is that there seemed to be some random button presses happening with the S9. 
basically registering button inputs when I hadn't pressed anything. With this being a pre-release version of the S9, Absolute have been rapid at providing firmware updates, and after a quick firmware update which involved connecting the S9 to my laptop and running a 10 second script, the S9 was working perfectly with no phantom inputs whatsoever. Being a pre-release version of the S9, there were undoubtedly going to be some teething problems, but seeing how quick and proactive Absolute are at fixing issues and rolling out updates is a really positive sign. Talking about pre-release, it's also worth pointing out that the Absolute S9 comes with an ability to map touchscreen controls to the buttons. This is done in the app and is a free feature as opposed to some of the competition that requires you to pay for that. Initially, I was a bit concerned thinking it could be finicky trying to map button presses to touchscreen controls, but I was really pleased to see that it was a really intuitive and easy to follow process. Simply selecting on the screen that you wanted to map a button, selecting the button you wanted to map, and then dragging to the point on the screen that you wanted it allocated to. I was amazed how quickly and easy it was to do and how well this worked as a functionality. Definitely something I'll be using in some other Android games, especially racing ones. The Absolute S9 also enables you to change the button mode from X input, NS mode, PS mode, HID mode, which is for Android games, and mapping mode. This helps you find the best button layout for whatever game you're playing, which was really useful when swapping between Fortnite and PS2 emulation. Considering I spent the rest of the day playing Fortnite and Tokyo Extreme Racer, I didn't once have any issues with wrist cramp something that is rare with almost all but a few handheld devices. The closest I can liken using the Absolute S9 in terms of comfort is the Steam Deck. Even using a traditional Xbox controller with a grip has the issue of weight distribution being top heavy, which causes its own issues. But the S9 placing the device in the middle totally solves this. Bigger devices might prove different, but for mobile phones, I had no issues with grip comfort at all. The main issue I did have was that using my mobile phone as a gaming device meant that any notifications I got distracted from the gameplay. I could switch off notifications, but I didn't want to as I still needed to have my phone fully functional. Another issue is that if I wanted to quickly jump on the internet to check something out, or even record some gameplay footage, I couldn't as I'd be using my phone for that. Now, that isn't an absolute S9 issue, but it is an issue if you're using your phone as a console. Plus, even though I fully charged my phone, putting in so much game time drained the battery quicker than normal. How quickly this happens will depend on your device and not the S9, but it's something to consider when using a mobile phone for gaming. However, I did find a solution to all of these issues. I still have my previous mobile phone, which is a Huawei Mate 20 Pro. It's six years old, but still packs a punch with a Kirin 980 processor. I keep it around purely for recording YouTube footage, so it was a perfect option to be a full-time gaming device. The power of the Mate 20 Pro wasn't up to my Xiaomi, however it still handles most PS2 emulation with ease, being easily as comparable to the likes of the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro, and considering you can pick them up for around about £70 secondhand, I'm really starting to believe in mobile phones with a dedicated controller for retro emulation. I continued playing loads of Tokyo Extreme Racer and Fortnite, but I also jumped into Minecraft. Similar to my experience with Fortnite, Minecraft plays brilliantly with the S9 and is closer to a home console experience than a traditional handheld. The ergonomics feel great, the game runs brilliantly on the large screen of a modern mobile phone, but most importantly, the controls are the best I've experienced playing Minecraft in handheld mode. It hadn't really dawned on me, but playing on my Retroid and Ambenic devices, the buttons to place and destroy blocks register slightly different to a standard controller. It means that when trying to place or destroy multiple blocks, it can be quite fiddly to find the perfect position to have the action happen continuously, which means more often than not you find yourself continuously clicking the shoulder button. However, as the S9 is designed more like a traditional controller, it performs so much better in these scenarios. Placing and destroying multiple blocks is as simple as holding down the trigger and moving your character. This makes a huge difference when making big builds and is a big reason why the S9 is my go-to option now for handheld Minecraft. Initially, I wasn't sure how a mobile phone would fare as a dedicated game in handheld, and I didn't know if the mobile controller options would provide the same quality as a dedicated handheld, let alone a console controller. However, from the moment I opened the Absolute S9, I could see the quality that was put into it. If you don't mind ignoring phone notifications for a while, or even better, if you can get a second mobile as a dedicated console, then I genuinely think that a mobile paired with the S9 is a top tier option for handheld gaming and retro emulation. You get good portability and superb ergonomics paired with the screen and performance of your choice. It's almost like you're making your own custom handheld to solve all the little issues we see in the traditional dedicated options. 
And what elevates the Absolute S9 above the competition is its great pricing and all the features it comes packed with, including the ability to hold your phone or tablet while it has a case on, customization options, and free touchscreen pairing. But if you want to make your own comparison with a dedicated handheld option, and check out the closest competitor I see to the S9, then check out this video right here.